We've got a fun little project today. You might have heard me mention it in the previous videos. Uh, we are going to take off this oil tank and I am going to do this fancy rod work on the oil tank. And then I'm going to epoxy prime it and I'm going to mold it with Bondo and then epoxy primer it again so you guys can get the full effect of this 3D work I'm trying to achieve with all of this nonsense that I got going on in my back finger because I know the first time I saw this I was completely clueless on what the hell was going on until the final product came out. Like, oh, that makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I've already marked the Sharpie spots right here, like spots that are close to my head and close to my frame that I shouldn't put rod on. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually remove the oil tank and I'm just going to get weird with it. So. Go ahead and do that. There it is. Definitely needs some uh, some loving and cleaning up. Super far out looking. Um, if you guys noticed during the uh, time lapse, I accidentally started welding the wrong side. <laughs> and I had to go back and clean it up. Hey, shit happens. I'm not too worried about it. But let's go ahead and throw this in here. Look at that. Boy. Still plenty of room between the actual oil tank and my frame and the head, so my rubber mounts can do their thing and allow this to, you know, move just a little bit. Uh, I started to realize something when I was welding this. Uh, I don't think we can rely as heavily on the Bondo as we will be on the frame fender and everything like that because this is an oil tank and it is going to get very hot. If you guys know anything about air cool car leaves, the oil is going to get hot in it. And did a little research and Bondo apparently does not like to get too hot because it'll actually change. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll start to crumble apparently. And I don't really want to find that out the hard way, especially because this is a rubber mat too, that 
insane vibration with the mixture of heat and something that doesn't like heat it just sounds like a headache and something's just waiting to happen. So I'm gonna go back and I think I'm just going to run a weld all the way through here, uh, clean it up a little bit with a Dremel and then Bondo it. So there's not quite as much Bondo as there will be on the body and stuff, but I think it will be worth it. And if not, oh well. Okay, something we are going to do real fast before we get too carried away is we are going to pressure test this tank. Make sure all your orifices are plugged, except for one. Put a little bit of water in there or something that won't cause rust because you're smart. Get that, shove it in there tight. It's all coming out of my... Uh, Oh yeah, there's some, there's some pressure in there. Putting about 60 PSI into here, which is more than my low lag pressure will be. Hey, and there's some pinholes. Who would have known? It's right where I welded. Like I've said many, many, many times, I'm not a professional welder. However, things are better than they used to be, used to be, believe it or not. Um, so we're gonna skip a couple steps here. So I talked to a good friend of mine, Chris. You guys probably know him as nobody knows him a shithead or a shithead. He uh, actually paints bikes for a living. He's been doing this much longer than me. He told me that you don't actually need to prime before you bond it. He said, just hit it with some 80 grit, slap that bondo on, and it's always worked out for him. So that's what we're gonna do. Let this sit overnight so this bondo is nice and hard. Uh, I'm gonna start off using Dremel with these little Scotch Brite bits. You can buy a pack of these. You can buy like a pack of 200 of these on Amazon for nothing, and they're extremely useful. Uh, wear a respirator or don't. I don't really care.
There she is, all primed up. I skipped a couple steps that I did off camera. I was painting some helmets and I had up my, fa my fancy uh, epoxy primer. So I just went ahead and coated this very heavy. There's some imperfections here and there, but of course, I'm going to do a shakedown with this out in the open, on the road, just primer, because I want to keep an eye on stress zones on the frame and bike and stuff, and I want to see what chips off and what doesn't chip off, and I'm going to be re-sanding and probably re-priming this anyway. I just want to see how the paint reacts, and of course you don't want to ride a bare bike around because that's going to rust and cause issues. But, let's go ahead and throw this in the bike so you guys can see. Just this. We'll see when everything's painted. Because who knew? But paint makes things bigger. There we go. We still got probably about half an inch between the head and the oil tank for my rubber, rubber mounts to do their thing. Got plenty of room between the frame. So there she is. Let me do a quick walk around for you guys. 